Today we're gonna talk about upcoming and newly released pixel art games such as Tower 57, we're gonna go to Minecon Earth and the big feature this month is pixel art on YouTube. Hello and welcome to Retronator Pixel Art News for November. November, November, how do you like the stash? Look at this shit. Yeah! Some people say I look like Luigi, I don't know why. Hey Mario, bring me my uh, Pixel Art News, I gotta get the show going. Future Flashback is a newly announced point and click adventure. Here's what they say about the game. Behold the future where a drug is capable of recreating vivid memories. Untangle the obsessive mind of an ex-surgeon that after an accident starts reliving the memories of a girl he never met. So definitely some interesting plotline going on there. It's all gonna be classic point and click adventure mechanics with puzzle solving. Future Flashback definitely gonna keep it on my radar. An adventure game that will make happy all of the fans of old LucasArts adventures is Night of the Meteor. In fact, it is a remake of Maniac Mansion, but reimagined as if it looked like Day of the Tentacle. It's a fan-made project and it's been in the works since 2008. It's gonna have extra elements, it's not gonna be just a straight-off remake, we already had that with Maniac Mansion Deluxe. So this one's gonna be new puzzles, dialogue, animation, and it looks like from the trailer, the guys actually have what it takes. Night of the Meteor. Last up is The Long Reach, which will come out on December 11th. If you only saw the trailer for The Long Reach, you might think it's just another game about killing zombies, but the game promises a different story, it's mostly an adventure game with plenty of dialogue and yes, there will be some running and hiding and trying to survive, but it's far from just mindless swinging of your crowbar in the zombies. So looking forward to The Long Reach, December 11th, next up a shitload of newly released games. Dead Cells is a roguelite metroidvania action platformer and it's been out since May 2017 already. So it's in early access and what we got in November is the fourth bigger update called the Brutal Update. The game is a roguevania, kind of like a roguelite Castlevania mix, so always interested in exploring a little bit of how they do procedural generation. It's available in Early Access only for Windows at $17. Dice Ward is a hack and slash platformer with procedural levels and roguelike elements. It's inspired by true classics like Barbarian, Moonstone, Golden Axe and Bubble Bubble. So yeah, it's got fast paced strategic combat with sword and bow. Dice Ward has positive reviews and is available for Windows for $9. One last platform fighter, Jump Gunners is the definite couch combat game for 1-4 to four players. This is one more of those games that I really like, they're aesthetic, I just want to stare at it, I don't really care about the gameplay that much, but you know that's just me. If you like it and you want to shoot some of your friends in the face in a video game of course, it's available for all three platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac at $15. From shooting to hack and slash. Hack is a glitch fantasy roguelike adventure about cute monsters, low beat hauntings and a suspiciously talkative narrator. Choose your character and battle through forests, deserts and dungeons to defeat a mysterious evil. You're gonna die a lot and then of course you get to try again because roguelikes. It's available for Mac, Lindos, Lindos and Winix. Oh my goodness. Windows, Linux and Mac for $15. I'm super excited to tell you about the game Don't Sink. It's a pirate business simulation thing where you go around the seas and try to build your little pirate towns and steal things to build taverns. It's released in early access. It's only available for Windows and right now it's there at $10. It's almost time for Game of the Month, but we're not there yet, so Boss 101 is gonna be the runner-up. I've been looking forward to it since I heard about the game at Indie Revolution Expo. And so Boss 101 is an action-adventure game, and the big thing about the game is that you create your own boss levels. 
a lot of content in there, a lot of upgrading, and there's a lot of screens and editors. It's a pretty complex game, has a lot of positive reviews. Boss 101, it's available for Windows only at $10. And now, game of the month, Tower 57. Ah, uh, yeah, Tower 57 finally came out. And I've talked about this game a lot, it's Twin Stick Shooter, it was on upcoming games, now it's finally out. What we got with the release is this cool little animation intro, so I've been playing it quite a lot. It's got that old school, here's a level, try and beat it in one go thing going on, because you can only save at the different save points. Thanks to CNG Mo, one of the best pixel artists out there, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Looking forward to playing it more. And you can play it on Windows and Mac for $12. It's coming to consoles and even to Amiga. Linux as well. So yeah, keep your eyes out for Tower 57. Go buy it, go play it, go wait for it and play it later. Game of the month, Tower 57. Hey Mario, bring out the piano and next up we have a music feature. Disaster Piece is the composer behind a lot of game soundtracks, including two pixel art favorites, Fez and Hyperlight Drifter. His music is very kind of ambiental. And in November, a new album came out from him called Disasters for Piano. And it's actually arranged by David Peacock. It's a really cool album. If you like Disaster Piece's music, if you just like piano, game soundtrack, all of those kind of categories apply. Check it out, it's on Disaster Piece Bandcamp. Let's take a look at Minecon Earth. It happened on November 18th. And instead of just being a huge convention, as previous years, it was actually a live stream. Will Arnett was co-hosting the show, so it was a lot of fun just enjoying it. He was kind of clueless about the game in the most lovable way possible. Another celebrity that appeared in the show was Melissa Benoist. She's the actress in the TV show Supergirl and she unveiled the super duper graphics pack for Minecraft that's gonna come in 2018 with a little bit of a musical, a nice little dance performance. The next big update was also announced, it's called Update Aquatic and the lead developer creative genius Jeb was telling us all about it, that you're pretty much gonna add a lot of more content underwater. It's supposed to be released in second quarter of 2018, so they're still playing around everything. But dude, there's dolphins and there's corals and you can throw tridents and fish and shipwrecks. All in all, it wasn't anything groundbreaking, but still a very fun show to watch and something to look forward to if you are a Minecraft player. 8-Bit ABCs is a book by John Freeborn. It's a little nice alphabet thing with pictures of old games like A is for asteroids, B is for banana. If you have kids and you want them to look at pixel art, this is one way to do it. Here it is, you can get it over here for free. Just something neat. We are not going to have a pixel art section today, but instead we're gonna have a huge community feature of YouTubers. If there is any such thing as a micro celebrity in a niche, Mort Mord would definitely be the one for pixel art. He's doing time lapses, has pixel art challenges, he live streams a lot, he has a big section with a lot of cool tips on tile sets and how to pick colors and basics of Photoshop. He's been doing this for about two and three years with great consistency. So he actually started a second channel called Mormort, where he just posts a vlog about how he's going about his life. Similar combination to Mortmort is the Poncho Pilgrim. Wow, he made a pixel art animation short called Boat Nomad just a month ago. Totally love it. And besides all of this, he has a lot of time lapses where he talks about what, how his process is. He has also not just pixel art, but also digital illustrations. And he talks about his life. 
what's going on so it's a mix of vlog and everything that i love he's been just getting started the poncho pilgrim next up we have armitage games so he has this monthly show called just May game where he's been discussing how he's making bannerman and he released the game a couple months ago so now he renamed from just May game to just made game and he's talking about uh the after he's been very open about how the whole reception of the game was and things he wasn't prepared for very insightful if you are making a game and releasing it definitely check out his videos and the vlog yeah armitage games untied games which is the name of the studio of will ties he mainly has three types of videos the dev logs of his game atmocopters speed spriting which is just kind of time lapses and especially like the ones he's doing about tiles really if you're into tiles will ties is your guy and every once in a while there's also a Will Sensei video on just random topics like making palettes. Now we're gonna go to people who do art tutorials and we're actually gonna start with AC Pride. They don't have that many videos yet but they do attack some more advanced features of AC Pride like how to move and rotate multiple layers at the same time. RHL Pixels is the channel of a pixel artist named Kat. She doesn't have a lot of videos yet, but the ones that are there are nice little insightful chats about things like anatomy, proportions, or how to pick colors. We're gonna round up the art tutorials with Jimzip, who has his series called Pixorama. Some of the videos are just time lapses, but there is also a lot of real-time demonstrations of how to pixel different things and he even labels his videos if they are easy or hard so you can find something to attack for your skill level. Next up we're gonna talk about artists that post time lapses. Game art stuff is the channel by Marco Valle. He's a great artist and his skills are just super insightful. He also has one video where he breaks down an image's composition and just kind of comments how things are flowing around. Super useful channel, game art stuff. I'm gonna have to just quickly go through the rest because there's so many that just post time lapses. Frankie Smile Show his channel or nickname of Francis Coulomb is really a well-known name in the scene. He's been posting videos for nine years. He has this kind of a grotesque art style. Louis Zuno is also somebody I follow closely. He doesn't narrate his stuff, but there are captions underneath. And similarly with captions, we have six VCR really cool style cool animations some skyrim scenes pixels ha is a very good well-known name it's octavi navarro making these huge scenes with a lot of stuff storybook style illustration kirkaz is gerardo quiroz an artist from peru that is probably one of the most prolific artists i know he really makes a lot of scenes with sci-fi or fantasy elements then we have diy games i've been following his tar forever he's been doing a lot of pixel dailies and here you can see his art process now it is amatniex is somebody i follow on patreon again a very cool art style with a little bit more pastel or kind of like natural earth tones palette that he often uses for our last category we're gonna look at artists that mix pixel art with game dev hard beast hundred thousand subscribers so this is a channel of benjamin anderson and recently he's been making Two tutorials to how to make RPGs in Game Maker Studio and on his YouTube channel you will get a lot of this kind of content. RPG to Heaven is another very interesting channel about a video game. In this case it's Nightkeep which just launched on Indiegogo. I really like the art style and on their YouTube channel you can find a lot of making of videos of how they're doing it. Before we close off this section, a special Movember shout out to 
Gaming FTL, Gaming Faster Than Light is not a pixel art channel but an indie gaming channel. I've been following its creator Josh Matthews for a long time now on Patreon. He made a really cool video on how pixel art is changing in modern games and just look at that mustache. I just cannot not give him a shout out in the November episode. I, I've kept it really short with no twiddly bits at the end, but I'm thinking of going back to the twiddly bits. We'll see about that. So, until the twiddly bits, mustache. We're gonna do a very short DIY section today. We're going to take a look at a website called LowSpec. It comes from Skittles, also known as Sam Caddy. What sets the page apart is the palette list. He has 124 palettes in his database. They have tags, you can search by them, you can restrict how many colors do you want, and they're very nicely presented with the colors and example art. So yeah, this is your ultimate resource for pixel art palettes on low spec. And that's it, that's our show. A lot of YouTube content, video games, a little bit less pixel art, but you should go and do some pixel art yourself. So uh, I have more to talk about next time. Thank you very much for being in the show. As always, you can support me on Patreon if you like my content. Even more importantly, if you're a pixel artist and you have other friends that like pixel art, please share my video. That would uh, help reach out to everyone that loves pixel art. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I will see you next time for the last episode December. See you then. Bye-bye.